What's up everyone, my name is Marie, welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, as you can see, I am building in the world of Strangerville and it has definitely been a while since I built anything in Strangerville. And I know that this may be an unpopular opinion, but I actually really, really like Strangerville. The gameplay, not so much. Well, I mean, I enjoyed it. I played it once. I did the whole like playthrough thing and I really, really enjoyed it, but I wouldn't want to play it again, I don't think. Um, so yeah, the gameplay aspect is, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not bad. It's actually really good. It's just not like you wouldn't play it over and over again. At least I wouldn't. And I feel like, I think that's how a lot of people feel, but the world of Strangerville is so gorgeous. I love it so much. And, um, yeah, I just, I really enjoy the overall, like, look and feel of Strangerville, and it's something that I am, like, so not used to, and I think that that's why I like it so much, because it's so different than anything I know and anything that I'm used to, um, and it's definitely not, like, any, any place I have ever been to either. I've just never seen this sort of environment before and well i i know like the whole style like from movies and things like that i recognize it but still like i have never seen this in real life and that's why i like strangerville so much and i definitely need to be in a mood to be able to build something here and i definitely couldn't do it over and over again but for this build, I was actually quite inspired because I found an image on Pinterest that I really, really liked. It was a, uh, an image of a Victorian cottage is what it was called. It wasn't an actual photograph or anything. It was just a sketch, like a picture, a painted picture of a house. Only the facade of the house too, but I really, really liked it. So I decided to go with that picture and try and build something similar in The Sims. And I only had a picture of the facade of the house, but the thing that I really, really liked about it was that the front door is on the second floor of the house. So you have this really, really big or like tall staircase going up to the, the second floor of the house or first floor, depending on where you live, I suppose. Um, but yeah. Um, this very tall staircase going up to the front door on the second floor of the house and that was something so different like it's not that creative or that different but to me it was definitely something that I've never done before um, so yeah I was just really inspired to do that and this build actually turned out to be way bigger than I initially wanted it to be I initially I initially wanted to build like this very cutesy little Victorian cottage kind of thing. So that's what I tried to go for. But then it just ended up being way bigger than what I had in mind. And I'm not mad about it. I really like the way that this house came out. But I don't know if I could still call this a cottage. It's kind of like somewhere in between a Victorian townhouse and a Victorian cottage, I feel like. I don't know. I don't know what to call this build just yet and by the time you're watching this video you'll know because the video will have a title by then but for now I don't know could I call this a cottage maybe I should buy maybe I should call it a Victorian townhouse but then again it also has like that overgrown like cottagey look and feel to it I don't know it's just it's somewhere in the middle there but I really like the way that this came out um, and yeah, it actually turned out to be a nice, spacious family home. It definitely has quite a bit of space. And I really like how the floor plan turned out as well. It's definitely different than anything I've done before, obviously because the front door is on the second floor. So on the second floor, there is like a large and spacious like living kitchen. It's somewhere in the middle between the living room and a kitchen, I feel like. It's definitely mostly kitchen and dining table, but then there, I also just created a nice seating area and stuff. And there is a, um, a study on the second floor as well. And then when you go downstairs there um, to the ground floor, um, I created like a little, I guess, informal living area where the TV is and things like that. And I placed an extra dining table downstairs as well. And then obviously downstairs we have the two bedrooms. I decorated a bedroom for parents and I decorated a, a shared bedroom for kids with bunk beds in it. 
Um, so you could actually have a family of four sims living in this house, but you could also easily turn the study um, on the second floor into, a, into an extra bedroom if you wanted to, so you could have even more sims living in this house. But yeah, the house is actually quite spacious. It's quite big and I'm not mad about it. I really, I don't know. I, I'm just really happy with the way that this turned out. Also because it was just so different than anything I've done in a long time. So it was very, very refreshing and yeah, I actually tried to make it look a little bit more modern on the inside. However, it's not modern at all. You can see that some parts of this house have recently been renovated, but still the owners try to like embrace the style, like the Victorian style, if that makes sense. I think I used a lot of items from um, vampires in here as well, which is definitely not one of my favorite packs as far as gameplay goes, but for the build and buy, oh my gosh, Vampires has amazing items. Definitely not very versatile because it's definitely a vibe, but yeah, I don't know. Every once in a while when I build something like this, the Vampires game pack comes in handy like so much. Like the items in there are just really well made and they're just really pretty. So I definitely used a couple of Vampires items in this build as well. And yeah, overall, it's just, it's kind of Victorian as well as like a little bit Gothic. And then also I used items from the paranormal stuff. So it also has that, what would you call that? Like that New Orleans vibe to it, if that makes sense. And yeah, I just kind of m mixed and matched all those styles together to create like a very personalized interior for this house and I am really happy with the way that it came out. It's quite colorful as well and the floor plan actually took me forever which I did not record because that would have been <laughs> way too long to just sit through and watch but yeah it, it took me forever to figure out the floor plan but once I figured it out I I was really quite happy with it. Um, as you can see we've moved on to the inside of the house and I did use that flowery wallpaper from Paranormal Stuff as well. I used it in the study and then I think for an accent wall here in the living area later on when I switched switched up the wallpapers here and there a little bit. Um, but yeah, basically when you walk through the front door, you enter into a very tiny little entryway with a staircase going downstairs this time <laughs> instead of upstairs. Um, so that was quite fun to me. And then off of the entryway, there is a full bathroom as well. This house actually has two and a half bathrooms and only two bedrooms. So yeah, it definitely has more than more than enough um, toilets and showers and things. But yeah, if you wanna have more than four sims in this house, which is definitely possible, then the bathrooms would definitely come in handy. And I didn't want there to be only bathrooms downstairs either. I just always like creating at least a half bath somewhere by the front door. It's just, I guess it's because I'm so used to houses being laid out that way. I live in the Netherlands, if you didn't know, and basically every house, I think pretty much, yeah, just every house in this country has a half bathroom off of the entryway. That's just, that's just what it is and it's what I'm used to. So yeah, I um, decided to put a bathroom off of the entryway for this house as well, but this one is actually a full bathroom. And then downstairs there is another full bathroom as well as a half bathroom. So yeah, more than enough bathrooms, but you can see that I use the counters from Vampires and I never ever use these counters, but like that dark green color is just so beautiful and it works so nicely with the whole vibe of this house and I was just really happy to be able to use those counters because I really do like them. I think they're very pretty, they're very well made and green is definitely one of my favorite colors. So whenever I get to use something green and it works, I am always very happy about it. <laughs> um, but you can see that the living area or the kitchen actually is quite spacious. There is a lot of counter space and I also created that large island. Um, and yeah, I just, I put the fridge and stove from the country kitchen kit. I felt like the color of those um, of those appliances was really nice. Like that creamy beigey white was just, it, it matched this counter or these counters really well in my opinion at least. So I decided to use those and the overall style of those appliances is also just so pretty and detailed and I just really like them a lot. Um, but here you can see I placed a dining table 
by the by the island counters and I was struggling to pick the chairs but I eventually ended up going for base game chairs and I think that table is actually from What's it from? Cats and Dogs, I feel like. Yeah, I think that dining table is from Cats and Dogs. And I really like the color scheme or like the swatch of that table. So I decided to use it in here. At first I was trying to limit my pack use, but then, I don't know, I just, I decided to not, to just not think about that too much because I was having so much fun furnishing this house and I, I just really wanted to utilize every single item that I wanted to or that came to mind. Um, or that I came across in the catalog that I thought would look nice. So yeah, I just decided to not limit my packs in any way for this build. Um, but yeah, I just, I overall, I feel like this house came together quite nicely. It took me a long time to build this because since this is not a style that I'm very familiar with or a style that I built in very often, it was just, it took me a while to make up my mind about a lot of things. And I've talked about this before, but I am a very indecisive builder. Like it takes me a long time to pick literally anything. So for this house, that was no different. And it even took me a little bit longer sometimes. Um, so yeah, it didn't really come together as fast as you, as you are watching it come together right now. But that's also because I just pause my recording software from time to time, like I can very easily pause my software and just make up my mind and then record again once I've made up my mind. And I do that <laughs> quite often. So that makes it a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, that's not that interesting at all. You can really see the kitchen come together. It's a very spacious kitchen. And I feel like the family would use this room of the house or like this part of the house very often like obviously when they have dinner and things like that they will use the kitchen and the dining table even though there is a dining table downstairs as well but i just figured that would be more of like a table where the kids would sit and do their homework or where you would play games or where you would like sit with your laptop and things like that it's it's more of one of those tables if that makes sense um and this is the actual dining table and I also placed a nice seating area in here as well and a bookcase. So you can also just sit here and relax and read a book or do your homework or whatever. Um, it's, it's literally like just a living area kitchen in one I feel like. However, there is no TV in here. The TV is downstairs. Um, but you can definitely see that I used those items like that couch and that chair from Paranormal Stuff. And it just really goes so nicely with the rest of this house. I don't really know what to call this interior style. It's not like one specific style. It's it's not like all Victorian or all or all Gothic or whatever. It's just it's it's a lot of things combined, I feel like. But the vibes really go together quite nicely, in my opinion at least. Um but yeah, this is the study area that I was talking about before. And you could easily turn this into a bedroom if you want to, so you can have a bigger family living here. I think you could also very easily fit a, um, a bunk bed in here as well, so you could have like up to six Sims living here maybe. It would be a little bit cramped, like this bedroom would definitely not be very spacious, but it would definitely work. Um, and I also just turn it into a small skill building area where I place an easel so your Sims can work on the painting skill as well. And then here we have the upstairs bathroom. This is a full bathroom and I use the shower tub combination from Vampires. I honestly don't think I've ever used that one before, except for in like a haunted house or an abandoned house that I've built before a long time ago. But I think that's literally the only house where I've used that shower tub combination. And for this house, I thought it'd be cool. I thought that the family, because the, the bathroom downstairs has a more modern shower tub combination, but I figured that the family would definitely want to try to keep this bathroom as traditional as possible. So maybe they like this tower, this tower, <laughs> I mean the shower tub combination was already in this house when they bought it and they really wanted to try and keep it so that they, they just fixed it up and now they can use it again. I feel like that would be quite fun. But then downstairs, like I said, there is a newer one there. Um, so yeah, that all works out nicely. And yeah, we are we are moving on to the ground floor right now. And <laughs> this area, it took me forever to figure out the floor plan for this area of the house as well, because the whole bedroom situation was a little bit wonky and the kids' bedroom definitely has a very odd shape. 
but for a house like this, I mean, this house is already a little bit weird as it is. So I feel like the bedrooms are allowed to be weird. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but yeah, there are definitely a lot of windows in this house as well. So I feel like the lighting situation, like the natural lighting situation would be so nice in this house. It's so like bright and light and nice. And that's definitely something that I really, really enjoy about this house. Um, but you can see that I placed a round dining table in the living area downstairs. I put some magazines on it and I really like the aspect of that little, um, of that two seater couch, that loft, that love seat um, as chairs basically, but obviously it's not functional. Your Sims can't sit on that couch. They can however sit on the chairs. So that works out perfectly fine. But in real life, I always really like, like it when people combine a dining table or a table in general with a bench or a couch. I always think that that looks so nice. Sadly, that doesn't work this way um, in The Sims, but it's, it's not functional, but it still looks nice. So yeah, I figured I would go for that combination of items. And here you can see I placed a couch and a TV. And partly because why this house turned out actually, it turned out very, very expensive. And I feel like one of the reasons why is because I used these chairs and these couches. They're all from base game and they're so incredibly expensive. Like I think they're the most expensive couches and chairs in the game pretty much. Um, so yeah, they're very, very expensive. So that's why this house turned out to be so expensive because I used a lot of chairs and couches in here. Um, but it's okay. I mean, I didn't really mind the budget. I didn't really think about the budget for this house at all anyway. So I was just going crazy. Um, so yeah, this is definitely not a house that you could afford if you're not playing with cheats or you just need to save up or like win the lottery or something. Um, then you should be just fine. But yeah, I feel like this house definitely turned out very, very expensive. But then again, I also feel like this house would have cost the family a lot of money because they probably needed to renovate the whole thing. It was probably very old and abandoned. That's kind of what I imagined. You can also kind of tell because that's why the whole like landscaping is so overgrown and the fence around the backyard is it's pretty broken too. And I feel like the family just didn't have the funds or the time to get to the backyard. And that's why that still looks so messy. And that's why they didn't replace the fencing and things like that. But I kind of like that for for the storyline. So I figured that fixing up this place would have been very, very expensive. Also because they renovated the whole bathroom downstairs and upstairs as well. And they renovated the whole kitchen probably while still embracing that like Victorian or Gothic style. So they really tried to, yeah, to just embrace that. But still, I feel like everything is pretty much renovated or at least fixed and cleaned up. Um, so yeah, that's that's just kind of the vibe that I was going for. And for the storyline of this of this house, I don't know, for the specific like family dynamics, I didn't really have anything in mind. For this house, I was just really enjoying the whole building aspect, which I obviously always enjoy <laughs> whenever I'm building a house. But yeah, I, I, I was trying to think of a family when I was building this, but I couldn't really think of anything. So I don't know. I just, I basically just furnished this house for two parents and two kids because I had the space for it and because I wanted this house to have at least four beds or like space for four sims. So that's what I tried to do. But I didn't really think about a storyline. I was thinking that the kids bedroom could be shared by twins, but that's mainly because I don't know, that just makes sense for two kids to be sharing a bedroom, they are sharing a bunk bed, they're sharing their toys. I mean, obviously you don't have to be twins to be able to do that, but I feel like that's just really the vibe that I got from that bedroom. So I just, I felt like this household would, um, would have two parents and twins, like twin kids. But it doesn't have to be that way. And I don't really know what profession the parents would have, like what kind of work they would do or what kind of things they would enjoy. If you have any specific storyline that comes to mind whenever you're watching this build, please let me know because I would love to hear your ideas. Um, I always think that that is so interesting. So yeah, what do you guys think that this, this family 
would do for a living or these parents would do for a living or would there even be two parents or would there just be one parent or would it be grandparents living with their grandkids or would it be a big sister or a big brother living with their like twin siblings i honestly don't know i do feel like like i said before this family would have to have quite a bit of money to be able to afford this whole like renovation process but yeah, I don't know. If you have anything in mind or if anything comes to mind when you're watching this, please let me know because I think that that would be really fun to read. Um, but yeah, this is the kids' bedroom that I already talked about a lot. I gave them some toys. I thought that that castle dollhouse was perfect for this whole like aesthetic of this house. I never really placed the dollhouses except for outside because they're so big and bulky, but I just sized this one down, I think once or twice. And then I just placed it in the corner and yeah, I just, I really like the whole castle vibe of that dollhouse. I don't know, it just really fits the vibe of this house and of this bedroom. So I decided to go with it. And then the kids have a walk-in closet and so do the parents. So that's actually quite nice. Both bedrooms do have big closets. And then I gave them a desk that they obviously need to share because I didn't really have the space to place a two-seater desk or like just a desk with two seats. Um, as well as all of these toys so I figured I would just give them a desk for one kid to use at a time and then still give them a lot of toys in here so that's what I decided to go for and yeah I'm, I'm really happy that I did that. I also gave them a crafting table so they can work on some skills in here and yeah overall I just really like the vibe of this bedroom. It's not too personalized like I said before because I didn't really have a specific storyline like specific personalities in mind which is kind of a shame but i have been struggling with that lately i don't know what's up with that i've been struggling with that for a month or so or like maybe even a couple months i don't know i've been struggling to come up with family dynamics and i don't know why <laughs> i've just been really enjoying building houses and really just thinking about the aesthetic of the house instead of the family that would live in it but at the same time it always really really helps me out whenever I do have a storyline in mind because that makes decorating so much easier and also a lot more interesting and a lot more fun um I still enjoyed this this though this is also a lot of fun but yeah when I have certain personalities in mind it just makes the whole decorating process a little bit easier um but yeah you can see that this this is the full bathroom downstairs. It's quite spacious. I was planning on placing laundry, but then I just, for some reason, decided against it. I don't know why, but I just decided to not place laundry. Um, but you could easily fit in laundry in any of the bathrooms in this house, I feel like. So you could definitely go ahead and do that if you want that gameplay aspect for your family or for your gameplay. Um, but we are moving on to the backyard of the house. So the house, actually does have a very nice and spacious back porch so I was able to fit a grill with a dining table as well as a seating area on this porch which is quite nice so your sims have a lot of activities well not so much activities but just spaces to hang out on this porch um, and I just decorated it with some plants and flowers and some like candles and things like that and for the rest of this backyard is actually quite spacious so I decided to place down a swing set as well as the monkey bars for the kids so they actually had a lot of outdoor activities to do and I feel like that's that's very nice for them. I was really enjoying the whole aesthetic of that um, swing set from what's it called Island Living for this house because it just looks a little bit older and just like I don't know. I don't know. It just looks a little bit older, I guess. And I really like that look for this backyard. And then I also used that overgrown monkey jungle item. What pack does that come with? Does that come with um, romantic garden stuff? It could be. I don't know. I honestly don't remember. But I like it because it's a little bit overgrown. So it really fits the vibe. Um, it really fits the vibe of this house, I feel like. So yeah, that's why I went with it. And then at the end here, we're almost coming to the end of the video, but then I decided to play around with the terrain tools a little bit. I thought that that would make a lot of sense for this house. So I, yeah, I just decided to raise the terrain here and there just ever so slightly, like definitely not a lot, but it 
does add some definition to the house and I really like the way that um, that it came out so I'm really happy that I decided to do that and then I just placed some plants on the wall like on the outside wall of this house like some vines and things like that and yeah I think that that is pretty much it for this video so let's hop into the game and I'll show you the house in real time so here we have the house in the game and I feel like it definitely looks very unique that actually works for this world because this whole world is quite weird I mean it's called Strangerville for a reason and I do feel like this house fits in with the rest of the neighborhood even though it's a little bit more detailed obviously but still I really like how this like facade of the house came out and then at the back here we have those monkey bars and the swing set and I also decorated a space for your sims to do some gardening and I gave them the flower arranging table and then here we have the porch area with a grill and a dining table and a nice place to just sit down and hang out but then moving on to the front door right here. When you walk into the house, you enter into this very, very small little entryway. It's very light and pretty looking though. And then off of the entryway, we have the full bathroom upstairs with the bathtub from parent, no, not from parenthood, from um, vampires, which I never really use, but I really like how it looks in this house. And then when you walk through this archway, you enter into this seating area slash kitchen. So the kitchen is definitely my favorite part of this house. It's so spacious and it just looks so warm and inviting and just like an actual family kitchen, I feel like. I really like this angle as well and I really like these um, appliances from the country kitchen pack in this house. Really makes sense in here. And here we have a little living area where you can just sit down and read a book and relax or what have you. And then moving on into this room, this is the study area where I just placed a quite modern computer and also an easel so your sims can do some skill building in here as well and then there's also an extra bookcase in here and then when we go downstairs we have the second dining table which I was imagining was not really for eating it could be used for eating obviously but it was more so just a table where you can sit and read a book or do your homework or just have a conversation or play a game or whatever and then here we have the TV area with a nice large couch and yeah a TV obviously just a nice place to hang out and then off off the living area on this side we we have a half bathroom which is always nice and handy to have and then on this side we have the parents bedroom which nothing crazy going on in here because I didn't really have any specific personalities in mind so I feel like it would be very easy to customize to your own liking but I did give them a walk-in closet and a mirror and an extra dresser on this side and then off of the living area on this side we have the kids shared bedroom with just a whole heap of toys and they also have a walk-in closet so that's quite nice and the craft crafting table right here and then over here we have the full bathroom downstairs which is definitely a bit more like renovated I feel like it definitely has a more modern shower in here the bathtub it looks a little bit older but could still be quite new but yeah a quite nice and spacious bathroom downstairs and yeah that's actually it for this house so this Victorian townhouse comes in at 114,817 simoleons it's very expensive like I already explained because I used a lot of items in this build that are very very expensive but then again I feel like this house would be quite expensive so it makes sense to me or at least that's what I'm telling myself that's actually already it for this video so I really hope that you enjoyed this build you can definitely go ahead and download it off the gallery if you want to my username on the gallery is Simmery Sims you can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram if you'd like my username on there is Simmery Sims as well if you're not subscribed to my channel already feel free to do so and and if you want to be notified of every single time I upload a video, just make sure to click that little bell icon and you should be fine. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next build. Bye!